Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on safety instrumented system failures. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Sys failures. It is very important to understand the types of failures on safety instrumented system and methods to improve the reliability. Failure types. There are two types of failures which are important to be considered in design of, of SIS and to improve safety instrument and system performance. Random failures and systematic failures. These are the two major category in which the safety instrument system can fail. Random failures. This is a type of failure occurring at a random time which results from one or more degradation mechanisms. For example, aging of sensors. This is applicable for the cis sensors, for valves, damaged diaphragm, o-rings, leaks, etc. The valves have a lot of mechanical components like seals, o-rings and uh, pneumatic devices. Any damage in those diaphragms and all can result into a random failure. Random failures can be effectively predicted with statistics and or the basis for the probability of failure on demand based calculation requirements for safety integrity level. As we know with the terminology, the failure itself is a random. So, the type of failure cannot be predicted. However, this can be done over the period of many years across different industries performing the similar operations or similar environmental conditions. So, the nature of failures may be typically similar from one plant, plant A to plant B. And uh, these kind of failures are, you know, they are about the internal components of a valve or a pneumatic uh, booster relay or pneuma air filter regulator or it could be in the actuator components wherein lot of small mechanical co components are there. So, failure of such uh, parts is quite difficult to understand from the external view of the equipment and instruments, valves, etc. And uh, secondly, for the sensors, uh, due to the aging, the diaphragm part, which is the one sensing the pressure and uh, giving an indication through the microprocessor based electronics back to the control system, basic process control system or uh, safety instrumented system, this can get failed due to continuous service and or whichever is in long time operations in the process. Bathtub view. So, the failure behavior of a population of hypothetical devices over their life cycle, that is from production to disposal, is commonly represented by the bathtub curve as shown in figure below. This will just go over it. This is the figure. We will go over it, the description, and then see the diagram. This plot shows how the overall failure rate of a device changes with time. The initial failure rate of the hypothetical devices is driven by its burn-in or infant mortality rate, which declines rapidly. This is the initial failure rate immediately after the production or within few days of operation, etc. The middle flat section of the curve represents the useful life of the device and is typically characterized by a constant failure rate. The middle part which is in green is the useful life and in normal circumstances the healthiness and operation of any instrument over this life period is quite long and there could be some rare failures. This SIF performance calculation is based on this middle section. The last part represents the wear out or end of life failure rate and is characterized by an increasing failure frequency. For example, if a sensor is designed for a healthy life of about 50 years, this is for an example. So, this early life is up to one year may be considered. So, up to one year period, there could be a chances of failure due to any manufacturing defect or it could be a common component failure etc which can happen during the early life of the instrument and the useful life which is which can spread around for example 50, uh, the total life of a sensor is 50 years and the useful life may spread around 40 45 years 
so in this period normally that uh, sensors will work healthily without any issue but there are some chances due to the harsh environment or uh, the process self or it could be due to some electronic failure due to high temperature etc which can result in a failure this is what mentioned as due to wear out useful life ends when failure rate starts to increase due to wear out failures if this curve is going to be exist for 40 years plus maybe 25 years to 30 years the sensors can work healthily and then it can start failing at a quite higher frequency and this last part which is known as a wear out period here for sure there could be chances of failure happen quite frequently and that, that's why this is shown in red zone so in the yellow zone and red zone the probability of failure is quite high and in the green zone only the instrument healthiness and effectiveness of its working is for many years so this is the years of shipment this is uh, the x-axis is rep represented by years after shipment and y-axis is represented as return rate mean time between repairs mtbr okay this is uh, shape of the curve is like a bathtub it is given as bathtub curve this is applicable for all instruments and also specifically for the safety instrumented system and another type of failure which is known as systematic failure a failure that happens in a deterministic not in a random way predictable fashion from a certain cause which can only be eliminated by a modification of the design or the manufacturing process operation procedures documentation or other relevant factors in this uh, type of failure all the failure happening in a systematic way which could be identical from plant A to plant B. So similarity of this type of failures over uh, four or five instruments in different plants it can be identified as a systematic failure. So how to correct these systematic failures only by improving the design or in the manufacturing process you mean the process itself there could be some erratic method which may lead to this such kind of failure of instruments so that can be mm, modified and the operating procedures of this particular equipment or instrument can be modified and documentation means there could be some testing or checking at a regular frequency that could be documented and can be improved here uh, we will see in detail about the systematic failures and how to improve it uh, there are few examples of the systematic failures Systematic failures are not age related but due to mistakes, errors made in supplier manufacturing process, design, installation, improper maintenance practices or unpredicted process changes, flow, pressure etc. If the processes change, process operation is changed due to get a higher production output or throughput, the flow or pressure in the particular uh, piping can go high which can uh, go out of the design limits at certain times this is not always possible that there could be some chances right chances of going to out of design range and lack of quality assurance testing and certification during the manufacturing process mistakes in design specifications wrong actuator sizing wrong material selection including o-ring seals etc the o-ring seals and all they are very critical and minute components that are situated in different parts of the actuator and they are also impacted by the environmental conditions with the temperature the dust environment etc so on the type of o-ring and uh, seals there are different uh, material the materials can be of lesser temperature capability so if you put this in a higher temperature environment naturally it is prone to fail so the type of uh, materials used for the type of service and uh, the process as well as the environment need to be evaluated before electing the respective seals or warnings etc poor initial installation improper maintenance or calibration practices configuration of software mismatches for example range time constants etc poor management change procedures some process changes verify technology and capability of the system so these are all 
rare but uh, because the means the operation they may be interested to increase the productivity or increase the quality of the product so they may be concentrating the operation side they may be focusing and concentrating to improve the quality or productivity and they may not put much efforts or much uh, concentration over the instruments or equipment installed across the plant so it may at rare chances land into failures methods to overcome random sys failures design sys configuration as redundant wherever possible diversify type of instruments to improve the safety instrumented function sif performance feedback failure data to technology centers for analysis there, there are multiple and repeated failures the data has to be given back to the technology teams so that they can evaluate and come out with a better design report the failure to instrument manufacturers about the failure type incident time and any issues with the field devices so what are the failures identified has to be reported back to the manufacturers so that the during the production they can do the design improvement and bring out with a better quality and higher capability material utilize reliability models and tools where applicable adjust the proof test interval to many failure human errors and plan for instrument replacement after useful life period see some plants they do the maintenance at regular intervals and do the replacement as and when it is required for example if the o-rings has to be replaced after 7 8 years or 10 years during a major turn around they will take it up and do the replacement but some plants due to the time limitation economic limitation they may skip out and then keep on running so these are all giving a good chance for the particular equipment or particular actuator or valve getting into failure and just the proof test interval to minimize fail any failure human errors and plot for instrument replacement after useful life period follow the recommendation from international safety certification agencies like tub xc etc these are the certifying agencies who do the detailed analysis for each of the instrument being manufactured and supplied to different plants at different environmental conditions based on the geographical locations so they are the instruments have been put into rigorous testing and after that only they certify those instruments for putting into the service so that has to be taken care and all the end users like manufacturing companies need to go for a certified products communicate to all applicable disciplines about any change in the process flow pressure and temperature variations if any so as i told earlier only the operations should not focus on the changing the quality or productivity for a particular plant so they have to analyze and then get in consultation with the design teams maintenance teams who are responsible whenever they are going for a change in the process condition It, this may also have some impact on the instrument installed suddenly if they increase the pressure there could be a chance of the sensor getting failed due to higher pressure these are all for small examples so those things has to be reviewed with the respective teams maintenance teams and engineering teams to have a safe operation document and share learning experiences with maintenance and engineering teams epcs epcs stand for engineering procurement engineering procurement and construction companies so that necessary improvements can be made over the type of construction installation maintenance and training so wherever required there has to be improvement so to make to come out with a better improvement any failures in the plant has to be communicated back to the manufacturers about the nature of failures so that the better design can be produced for the future products so this is a combined responsibility plant operations and the plant production charges has to take care and communicate to the relevant teams thank you Thank <laughs> you.